What's up y'all? Clean Cuts the One back with another video and it's been a minute and there's been a whole lot of things going on that I need to get you guys caught up on. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the absence and for the delay, whatever. You know, I, I keep coming back to this place where I'm always apologizing for not being able, uh, you know, to produce the content like I did. But dude, it's like when I was producing daily content, I was in barber school. I'm not in barber school. We've just now opened uh, what is my second shop, even though it's the same shop, um, I'm busy as a shop owner. I'm busy doing all the things that I was trying to learn how to do before. So, with that being said, uh, I apologize for the lack of content. I've been getting a ton of messages from you guys asking me to produce more content. Uh, and here I am. I've never left. I'm not going to leave. Um, but a lot of times the reason why I'm not producing content is because I'm out living and getting this experience. And so if you have an expectation on me to be like another YouTuber or whatever, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just a dude who's documented his journey and I'm a barber. I'm a shop owner. I'm, uh, I'm just a dude, you know what I'm saying, who's, who's doing what he's called to do. So I do my best and uh, you know I always definitely try to give back because I am grateful. I do love the fact that uh, this is a platform for me to be able to give back. So anyways, having said all that, I said this is my second shop, right? So what you guys aren't aware of is in on February 23rd, um, here in Knoxville, Tennessee, it had been raining for almost two weeks, over two weeks. And What's up, y'all? Clean Cuts the One back with another video. I got a new shop. I got a new beard. I got new whole bunch of stuff. And I need to talk to you guys about what the process was for all this newness. What's been going on? You ain't been putting out videos. I know I've not been putting out as many videos, but the thing is, like, I'm not a student anymore when I was putting out daily videos, and I'm not a YouTube barber. I'm a real-life student who learned how to do some things, and I've been out here executing, like... I'm not a, uh, I, I do this for you guys because I want you guys to see my process. And I want you guys to be able to learn and, and win from having, you know, from my experiences. So uh, here I am back again just as soon as I can be. And like I said, new beard came with the new shop. I know I should have video on, did a video on the beard. I didn't. My bad, y'all. Forgive me. Hey, here we are. We'll talk about that later. We'll do another video on the beard or go live on Instagram or something like that. What you guys don't know is on February 23rd, uh, it had been raining in Knoxville for about two weeks. And I was actually, we were talking in the barbershop about how much rain there had been. And I was acknowledging the fact that the rain had not been a topic of my conversation because it really hadn't affected me. On that same day, I had somebody tell me, you need to look outside and see how much water there is. So when I went outside, I saw literally six feet of water in the basement. Like I could have jumped off the balcony where my shop was into this water and swam. And I was like, wow, we were doing business. We had lights on, everything was good. And I just thought, man, that's a bunch of water in the basement. It'll recede, everything will be fine. Um, on that same day, we did send the barbers home early because water was starting to creep in on the highway down the street. And I didn't know if we were gonna be able to get home. Uh, we sent everybody home and prepared to come into work the next day. And we came in, there was no power. What had happened was, I'm not sure how we had electricity and six feet of water in the basement at the same time, but the water had risen above the electrical boxes in our basement. And when the water rises above the electrical boxes, the uh, KUB, which is Knoxville Utility Board, they cut the power off. Clean Cut Grooming Lounge reporting to you live from uh, the South Knoxville Lake, also known as the back door of Clean Cut Grooming Lounge. And, uh, you know, a lot of you guys got phone calls from us and text messages because we had to cancel our appointments today, man. We're so sorry that we had to do that. Um, the thing is, KUB has us cut off at the pole. It's not actually a water damage situation. It's that KUB decided that this is what's safe. And, you know, we have to when they cut the power off, we took a week off of work. We figured, hey, we'll take a week off with the water recede. If the electricity cut back on, we're fine. Um, that was not the case. That's not what happened. We ended up talking to the landlord and the landlord said that listen we're gonna have to have an inspection we got city and county codes coming out this building isn't up to code and with the bill not being up to code man the utility board said you guys gotta fix this whole shopping center before we're gonna turn the power back on you know I had to do something uh, I had to figure out how you know what, what are we gonna do because I've got appointments lined up for weeks I've got barbers who have kids and who have families and bills and I had to come up with a solution and so um, you know I had one of my clients one of my friends who um, brought me a generator 
that I plugged up two extension cords to and uh, I went and bought a kerosene heater. I found a kerosene heater that was like 40 years old and because uh, it was like 19 degrees in the morning and we just figured okay I'm gonna hook up this generator and we'll use these kerosene heaters until we can figure out what's gonna what's gonna happen. How is this gonna work out? And so uh, you know in this process I ended up losing a barber who ended up coming back uh, but it was just so difficult for everyone. I was having to come into the shop at 4.30 in the morning, turn on the kerosene heaters, and I'm not gonna lie, dude, like I was, I was just falling asleep with the kerosene heaters lit on the couch in my shop waiting for eight o'clock to come. So here we are at the shop. Can't even see nothing. His appointment started at eight. How to get the kerosene heaters hooked up. This is super illegal um, to be running with no electricity, no hot water, no really anything that you're supposed to have. Um, but you got to do what you got to do to make it work. It doesn't do any good to stay focused on the fact that we got all these problems and you know, I'm just, I'm, like my friend Danny says, find the yes, get into a solution, figure out what you're going to do, make it happen. Be sitting here complaining. I want you guys to still know that you can overcome anything, right? It doesn't stop with like a, a dramatic life change or, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be anything that stops you ever from doing what you want to do. So hopefully, I mean, the purpose of this channel is to motivate was to motivate, inspire, and encourage you guys. And to keep myself motivated, inspired, and encouraged. And it keeps me accountable as well. Because I can't tell you guys to do stuff that I'm not willing to do. I got a full schedule. It's going to be three barbers. All of us don't work on Monday. And let's see how it goes. Um, because, you know, it takes several hours for kerosene heaters to heat up a building. Um, the generators were running the ring lights and thank God for cordless tools. These guys pushed through. They cut hair for about two and a half, almost three weeks by generator and ring light. That means halfway through the day, you got to fill it up with gas. This particular generator was leaking oil, so you had to fill it up with oil every day. Um, it was crazy, man. My clients were coming in. They were asking if we're doing something with the lighting, and I'm having to explain and apologize. And I realized that like this is going to take a minute. Like I need to build a shop like bad so uh, I blocked off my schedule canceled all my appointments <clears throat> in this building that I'm in I've been looking at it for two years I actually did not get this building in originally because I didn't think I could afford it I didn't think that we could grow into it I thought it was too big um, but I called the landlord of it and I said listen man I'm in a bad situation I need to do something he said don't even worry about it come on over here he said I'll meet you tomorrow figure out what we need to do to build this thing out so I come over here and I'm looking at this shop and it's got walls up and stuff like that. And at this point, all I want to do is set my chairs down, put up a mirror and be able to make it work. Um, however, that wasn't really a practical way to run a barber shop. And it's like when I decide to do something, like I'm all in. All right, March 9th, 2019. As you can see, demolition day one. We're getting this demolition knocked out. We're going to build a barber shop in a week. We're building this barber shop in one week. We're gonna get an inspect. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. I'm talking about like when stuff, man. When it gets like this, like when when you face a hard time or a difficult situation, it's really good to know who you are and what you're capable of and what your assets are so you can draw on that. You can get people who are better at doing what you don't know how to do and let them do that, right? And then you can hone in on what you gotta do. Man, I'm the owner of Clean Cut Grooming Lounge. I'm going into my shop, I'm demoing it, I'm breaking this thing down, I'm working hard, bro. I'm sweating. I'm getting in there. It's going to get done. It's got to get done because if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Man, I can't express the motivation when you've got a vision and you know what's coming, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's, mm. praise God, man. Y'all stay tuned. Watch this. I don't, I don't stop. I just, I can't think about anything but doing what my goal is. And so, uh, you know, I, I hired a, a contractor. Uh, to help me with the teardown and the build out stuff like that. We got to work, man. And I was in here every single day from 7 a.m. I was getting up at 4 
uh, I was turning on the kerosene heaters when my barbers came in at 7 a.m. I was headed to the new shop doing the build out and we were in here till 2 a.m. Uh, you know I had friends to help me out you know come to build some columns I had people offering to help me paint um, I had a, a lot of people offering to help in any way they could so I accepted help where I could a lot of places I, a lot of times I just rather do something myself because I want it to be done the right way and not that other people do stuff wrong but it is what it is, man. It just, I couldn't find myself, um, there was no rest. Like, there was no sitting down watching TV. There was no, like, my mind. Because if you're thinking about it, like, I'm, I'm the only income in my house. My wife, she's a, a, a work-at-home mother. You know, she schools my children. I have one income. So, I'm thinking, like, this is my business. So, we built this shop out. It took about three weeks. And I'm proud to say, man, Clean Cut Grooming Lounge, we moved one mile up the street, and it's uh, it's awesome. You know, we've, uh, the, the barber that left, he's come back, and, you know, I thank God for that and completely understand his situation, you know, with regards to, to, to why everything happened the way that it did. And, uh, you know, so we're just glad and grateful to have him back. Uh, great dude. And we've actually added barbers. So we've got more barbers, we've got more space, we've got a better shop. And uh, so onto the beard, like when I was, when we were opening this shop for the very first day, I decided like this is a time of new beginnings. This is a time of newness. And so when I was sitting, uh, it was day one, as soon as we had state board, once the shop was licensed, uh, I got a beard sculpt from Alex Wade. And it's been refreshing. You know, a lot of you guys have been asking, what's it like not having the beard? And I still kind of grab for my phantom beard, like, you know, feeling like something's there. But it's, you know, i got this white neck, but uh, it's cool. It's, um, my beard and the way I look doesn't make me. You know what I mean? Uh, having beard oil and stuff like that, being a beard specialist, it does help to have a beard and stuff like that. But, you know, God kind of told me, like, your brand is there. You have a brand. You no longer have to, uh, you know, you don't have to do a gimmick to sell your brand because you have a good brand and your brand is you. It's not your beard. It's not how you look. Your brand is you. So having said all that, I wanted to just take some time to thank you guys for your support. A lot of you guys have been in my DMs following the story to a degree. You know, I couldn't keep you updated in real time because, uh, I mean, my shop was illegal. It was a garage barber shop, you know, state board, you gotta have hot running water to be able to run a barber shop. Um, you can't be running off a generator due to city code. So if I had updated you guys in real time, somebody probably would have called state board or codes and they would have shut us down immediately. So uh, did I run an illegal barber shop? I absolutely did. Would I do it again? I absolutely would in the exact same way. I would do whatever I had to do to feed my family to make sure that my barbers had a means of income, that everything was going to be okay. And, um, you know, with the new shop, we raised our price list, uh, immediate price increase. Uh, we're making more money. We've got more clients. Uh, we're taking walk-ins now. And this has been an overall good experience. So um, if something difficult happens along the path, something that's out of your control, that's not a license to give up. That's not a license to stop pushing because you got what it takes to be successful. So when you see obstacles and you see adversity and stuff like that coming your way, handle it. Handle it. Do what you got to do. Make decisions. Or don't let fear paralyze you or cripple you into inaction because if you do nothing, then I guarantee you everything's going to fall apart. But if you make a decision to do what you have to do to find success, you will find a measure of success. So I suggest that you shoot for a million dollars and rake in a hundred thousand, or maybe you shoot for a million and you hit a million. Regardless, have a 10X mindset, be ready to push no matter what, and keep grinding. There are no excuses, find the yes. Hope this video was helpful for you guys. Make sure to hit me in my inbox. Make sure to let me know what's going on with you guys. Um, and just, you know, let's let's engage. You know, I've been a lot more active on my Instagram lately. And uh, the shop page been, has been popping. Uh, the shop Facebook's been popping. So go ahead and like my shop Facebook. Go ahead and hit me up on Instagram. All that good stuff, man. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Until next time, peace.